Let's check on stories we're following for you today on Robin Hood Radio. Pat Pagano's forecast, sun and some clouds today, high near 80. We'll get the full details from Pat Pagano in just a few minutes. As we first reported yesterday afternoon, the Sharon Bank robbery suspect is still at large. After the robbery, a man fled the scene on foot yesterday afternoon. Video footage is being looked at. Richard Ruthman's story in the Republican American today, that robbery remained at large and unidentified last night into this morning morning. The suspect, believed to be a white male wearing blue jeans and a blue sweater, fled the scene on foot. Details emerged during the initial phase of the investigation that included reports a suspicious male had walked into the Torrington Savings Bank in Falls Village earlier that morning and then left. Video surveillance of that incident is under review and being compared with footage drawn from the Falls Village cameras. Reports also being investigated of a possible getaway car with an accomplice waiting nearby. State police investigating numerous leads in both Sharon and neighboring Canaan and further information is forthcoming. Anybody with information asked to contact the Connecticut State Police Troop B in North Canaan at 1-800-497-0403. Local residents have long been privileged to view the photographs of Laszlo Grosak, but now a wider audience is appreciating his talent. He recently received the Photograph of the Year Award for 2020-21 for the New England Camera Club Council, his winning entry titled Choreograph Dance. In addition, he was given the Daniel Chabernet Memorial Award of the Year for Interclub Competition. He's rarely been seen without a camera. The prize photo of an egret in flight was taken at Sherwood Island a few years ago. As with any photograph, he says timing is everything. He's been at that site many times since then and has never seen one again. The Connecticut Department of Public Health on Sunday issued an alert that strongly recommends all Connecticut residents over two years old wear face masks in indoor public spaces, whether they're vaccinated or not, given the rapid increase of COVID-19 cases over the past two weeks because of the Delta variant. The warning came as all but one of Connecticut's eight counties were classified by the U.S. Center for Disease Control as having substantial transmission of COVID-19. The state's only county on Sunday with moderate transmission was Litchfield County. They have a high likelihood, though, according to the state, of meeting the substantial threshold soon. The CDC has found that community transmission in Columbia County is now substantial. Mask wearing is recommended by the CDC whenever community transmission is substantial. The level of community transmission is found by the CDC as substantial or high. They recommend indoor mask wearing regardless of vaccination status. They found the level of community transmission in Columbia County is substantial. They recommend that people in Columbia County wear a mask when indoors regardless of vaccination status in compliance with CDC guidance. The latest guidance and community transmission data is available from the CDC. The Sandusfield Select Board Chair is offering to fill leadership voids on interim basis. Deadlines for state grants, various invoices for payment, and many details running a municipality are all held in a now-locked email account for former town administrator Joanne Greibush as official struggle to get the town back on sure footing. Quoting here, I don't know what's happening in those emails, end quote. Select Board Chairman George Riley said at a meeting on Monday in which he suggested that he assume the administrator post on an interim basis until a permanent replacement can be found. The email issue is just one of many Riley is facing as he works to stem the fallout from staff departures and a report in May by an auditor that found the town's recent ledgers askew, something a 2016 audit also found, and that went uncorrected. A Lanesboro police officer has been fired over improper use of criminal records. It's not your personal Google. That's what the Lanesboro police officer, Brennan J. Politiro, was told after the town's chief determined that he violated state law by looking up women on a criminal justice database without a valid police purpose. He was fired by the town in the spring. After then, Chief Timothy Sorrell, in a probe that consumed most of his final months in office, established a pattern of improper surveillance by the officer, amounting to what Sorrell viewed as stalking and harassment of women. The women targeted included people with whom Paviola had a current or past relationship or those he wanted to date, according to that report. Well, after being canceled last summer due to the pandemic, the Elster County Fair is back. It runs today through the 8th at the Elster County Fairgrounds. There's 
racing pigs, petting zoos, Josh Landry, chainsaw carver, horse shows, fireworks, and more. Music from Sass and Brass with Daryl McGill, Neil McCoy, and Emily and Ann Roberts. Swoon Brothers, Roots and Beers Tours, and Exile. All shows are free with paid fare admission. It's at the Ulster County Fairgrounds on Liberty Real Road in New Paltz. The fair hours are Wednesday and Thursday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Senior Day is August 5th, free for seniors in between 10 and 4. More information at info at ulstercountyfair.com. New York State investigators are looking into conditions at a Poughkeepsie nursing home after a former employee said staffing problems made it an impossible task to care for people and a nightmare to work there. The State Department of Health said it's investigating a complaint that was filed about the Grand Rehabilitation and Nursing at River Valley, which is located at 140 Main Street in Poughkeepsie. The issues at the facility were voiced by Larissa Laurie Melendez, who said she worked as a staffing coordinator for about five weeks this summer before quitting because of the poor conditions. She said a lack of nursing staff and mistreatment and neglect of residents plagued the facility where conditions were unlike anything she had ever seen before. Sharon Park and Recreation presents the final of their Sharon Summer Concert Series coming up on August 4th. The Regulators, Roots Rock, American Country, and Blues. It's Underwritten by anonymous underwriters. It's also put together by Sharon Package Store, Webster Bank, and bad members, the FTC Construction. More information, Sharon Park and Recreation.org. Sharon Hospital, part of New Vance Health, will host its online community update 5.30 till 7.30 on Thursday, August 5th via online live stream video. Members of the surrounding community are invited to join the webinar to hear from the hospital president discussing the latest hospital developments and updates on the affiliation that created New Vance Health. The independent monitor engaged by New Vance Health will be present to report on its review of compliance with the affiliation agreement issued by the Connecticut's Office for Health Strategy. A question and answer period will follow the presentation. Participants are encouraged to submit questions in advance. Email Sharon Hospital at newvancehealth.org or call 845-554-1734 with their name and telephone number. Instructions on how to join the virtual meeting are posted on the hospital's website, newvancehealth.org slash ctforums. The event will also stream at facebook.com slash Sharon Hospital. The American Mural Project is hosting preview tours on Thursday in August to view the current mural installation progress. The tours on August 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th will be offered at 5.30, lasting approximately 45 minutes, and precede the Friends of Main Street Summer Concert Series at East End Park. Pre-registration is required for the tours at 90 Whiting Street in Winstead, Connecticut. Limited registrations are available for the reservations and more information on the web, American Mural Project. Dot org slash tours. The 10th Annual Sunset Music Series and Car Cruise in North Canaan at the Couch Pipe of VFW Post and Auxiliary continues this Thursday from 6 till 9 p.m. The Hot Shot Hillbillies. It's rain or shine. All activities are 6 till 9 p.m. Coming up at the Roll of Jansen Community Library, Bees and Beekeeping on Friday, August 6th from 10 to 11 in the morning. Children having the opportunity to learn all about bees and beekeeping from local beekeeper John Jasmine at the library. More information, rojanlibrary.org. Salisbury Congregational Church presents Meeting House Music Meditation the first Friday of every month from noon till 1230. A half hour of organ and instrumental music Music free to the community at Salisbury Congregational Church. The August Meeting House Music and Meditation will be held this Friday with selections from Bach, Pachelbel, and Mendelssohn. An exhibition of painting and other forms of art, the Rose Algren Art Show, will open up on Friday with no reception from 2 till 6 p.m., Saturday from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m., and Sunday from 10 a.m. till 12 noon at Cornwall Consolidated School in West Cornwall. Portions of the proceeds are donated to Cornwall Women's Society Scholarship Fund. More information, rosealgrantartshow.org. Friday on the Green continues with summer events in Norfolk's Village Green this coming Friday.
African Drumming and Storytelling, presented by the Norfolk United Congregational Church and the Norfolk Library. The 62nd Annual Sharon on the Green Arts and Crafts Fair will be held Saturday all day on the Green, typically between 60 and 80 vendors offering original works. The show opens at 10, closes at 5 p.m. It's rain or shine. Food services are available. It is a free event. Sharon Methodist Church will be having another tag sale on Saturday from 9 to 3 in the basement, Upper Main Street, which is still full. Prices will be negotiable. Community Dog Show, the front lawn of the Stockbridge Library, on Saturday, 10.30 till 1. A day filled with dogs and fun. Raffle prizes, children's craft table, dog-themed story time, and story walk. And you can read aloud to a dog. The Kent Memorial Library has local artist Thomas Franklin having artwork displayed at the library's galley. It continues through the end of August. Now, a special reception will be held this Saturday at the library from 4 until 6 p.m. Ankrum Opera House announces the in-person return of Storytelling Stories, Real People, Real Stories, August 7th at 7 p.m. The summer's presentation features authentic personal narratives told by four local residents for a live audience at the Hilltop Barn, Rojan Park in Hillsdale, New York. Tickets and more information, ankrumoperahouse.org. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgans at the Interlaken, interlakeninn.com. Also underwritten by Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com, and by Viali Insurance, 75 Main Street in Lee, insuring seasonal and secondary homes in the Berkshire since 1912, 413-243-0347, vialiinsurance.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average starts off today at 34,838.16, the NASDAQ at 14,681.07, and the S&P 500 at 4387.16. We'll take a look at that tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.